Welcome, Greek U Nation, to episode number 409 of the Fraternity Foodie Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Eilon, CEO of Greek University. I'm a speaker and an author. Our fourth book was just released. It's called Using AI to Grow Your Fraternity or Sorority. So go and pick up that book today on Amazon. We also have a fifth book that is going to be out by Christmas. So be on the lookout for that book. It is coming very, very soon. Of course, we call these episodes the Fraternity Foodie Podcast because there is nothing like great food to bring fraternity and sorority leaders together. Fun fact, this week our team is in Tampa, Florida for the Association of Fraternity and Sorority Advisors annual meeting. So if you are in Tampa this week as well, be sure to stop by our exhibit hall booth to meet our speaking and consulting team. We have some free books that are waiting for you. And let's get to our next guest. Our next guest is Kelsey Ryan. She is one of my favorite humans in higher education, and she is a big fan of Greek University. She is passionate about higher education and the student experience, specifically fraternity and sorority life, leadership development, student development, and civic engagement. Kelsey is a strong community and social services professional. She has a master's of science in higher education with a concentration in student affairs from the University of North Florida and a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry of all things with a concentration in biochem from Georgia Southern University. Welcome to the show, Kelsey. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Oh my goodness. I am so excited that you are on the show with us. I know what a big fan you are of Greek University and our team of speakers and consultants, but you know, I know our audience wants to learn more about you today, and you decided on Georgia Southern for your undergraduate experience. So yeah. tell our audience, why did you decide on Georgia Southern? Yeah, so I actually, I am um, a native Floridian, grew up, born and raised in Jacksonville, Florida, um, and found out about Georgia Southern just kind of haphazardly, drove past it when I was in eighth or ninth grade on a way on the way back home from a trip. Um, and, you know, put it in my mind and said, when I get to the point when I'm going to start looking at colleges, like, I want to look at this one. Um, kind of forgot about it until I found it again at a college fair my junior year in undergrad, or in, not undergrad, sorry, in um, high school. And um, just, I was being recruited by a number of different colleges, but Georgia Southern was the only one that paid attention to the fact that I go by my middle name. And so all of the other colleges, when they were recruiting me, I was getting letters that said, you know, hey, Catherine Ryan, um, Catherine's my first name, and Georgia Southern was the only one that paid attention to the fact that I, I put that I go by my middle name, which is Kelsey. Um, so that was really important to me, um, that they were, you know, paying attention to the little things. Um, and then when they offered me a pretty big scholarship, that kind of sealed the deal. <laughs> Money talks, right? <laughs> but that is nice that they personalized it to you. I'm yes. Like yeah. And so I was able to be a part of um, the honors program. And not only the honors program, but a specific subsection of it that was called the 1906 Scholars, because mm -hmm. um, Georgia Southern was founded in 1906. Um, and so I actually had a free ride for all four years. Woo, good for you. Very, very nice. I love it. And now that I have two kids that are entering college, either in college or going next year, I totally understand this yes. whole thing. I mean, if you can get free <laughs> tuition, just go. That's all I can say. Absolutely. <laughs> and I know you're also a proud member of Kappa Kappa Gamma. So what made you want to join them? Yeah, so um, I used to say when I was an undergrad, um, the second best decision that I ever made was going to Georgia Southern. The first best decision I made was joining Kappa at Georgia Southern. Um, so I actually, when I went to college, I was anti-Greek. Um, a lot of people wouldn't think that about me now, <laughs> um, but I'm a first generation college student. I, um, when I went to college, what I knew about Greek life was I was like, I've seen Animal House um that's I'm I'm not interested in that I don't you know I don't want to buy my friends I can make friends on my own I don't need to pay for parties you know I had all of the stereotypical thoughts um and my freshman year I met some women that were in Panhellenic organizations um who had lived on lived on my hall freshman year and I started to think um there might be a little bit more to this fraternity and sorority thing than uh than what Animal House showed us um so decided to go through the recruitment process my sophomore year just to branch out and meet new people. Um, I was committed that I'm not going to join an organization. I just, you know, kind of want to put my toe in and get a feel for it. Um, and the moment I walked into Kappa, I felt I felt at home. Um, and I know that's the cliche that people say, but it's, it's really what I felt. Um, and they were also the only chapter that didn't do the cookie cutter questions. 
Um, so the first day of recruitment, you know, you go to each each house. And so by the time I got to Kappa, I think I had answered five different times. Where are you from? What's your major? Why did you decide on Georgia Southern? And I got to Kappa and the recruiter that I was talking to, she and I had a 20 minute conversation about Harry Potter and Twilight. Um, <laughs> I am pro Harry Potter. I am anti Twilight. She was also pro Harry Potter and anti Twilight. And so we just talked about that for 20 minutes. And I was like, this is just a typical conversation that I'm having with a gal I just met. And this is the place that I want to be. So they did their research. They paired me up properly. And the rest is history. I absolutely love it. So you're a Swifty and you love Harry Potter. All right. I totally yes. get you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. So, all right. I love it. Authentic connections. This is really yep. good. And of course, you were an advisor and a volunteer for Kappa for 10 years. So I'm wondering, not everybody is like us, right? I mean, that's right. just incredible in itself. So what makes you want to give back like that to Kappa? Because I think so many folks who are in IFC organizations, in Panhellenic organizations, they joined for four years and it was something yeah. that they did, past tense, right. in college versus that lifetime commitment that you and I have. So what makes you want to give back? Yeah, so I am adamant that I say I am a Kappa. I It's not I was a Kappa. I made a commitment for life, um, and I am here for life. And so um, for me, Kappa um, as an undergrad just gave me so many opportunities um, to really develop into who I am today. Um, so not only the leadership opportunities, the service opportunities, the networking opportunities, but really pushed me and helped me grow. Um, I even changed my career trajectory. Like I was going to be a pharmacist. I had a plan. Um, and now here I am in higher education. <laughs> so um, Kappa made such a huge impact on me that I made a commitment that I want to do everything I can to make sure these organizations stay around for the next generation and the next generation so that the people who come after me can have those same experiences and grow into the best version of themselves. Um, and you and I both know that there's a lot of negative about fraternities and sororities um, and has been in the news for a while for years. Um, and so I was like, I have to do my part to show what the good is and also encourage the, the students who come after me, the women and men who come after me to make sure that they're finding the good as well um, so that we can keep these organizations. Yeah, you and me both. I mean, I'm always thinking about the next generation, my kids, uh, you know, and just making sure they have the same great experiences and opportunities yeah. that I had. It was such a formative part of my experience and it still is to this day so I'm going to do yeah. everything I can to defend it and make sure that it continues for the next century um you know I'm wondering because I know that you volunteered on the DEI committee for Kappa um, and their headquarters talk to us a little bit about that DEI committee and what advancements were made as a result of that yeah so I joined the DEI committee right after um Kappa had eliminated their legacy policy. Mm -hmm. um, and that was you know, something pretty consistent with a number of panel organizations. Everybody eliminated, eliminated their legacy policy around the same time. Mm -hmm. um, but when I was on the committee, we really focused on um, reviewing our policies and procedures and updating them to make sure that we were using appropriate inclusive language. Um, and then we also worked really hard to make sure that we were incorporating DEI initiatives into all aspects of the fraternity. Um, so creating a DEI position on the councils, absolutely, but it's not just that one woman's job. Um, it's the entire chapter's job to make sure that they're being inclusive and respectful and equitable. Um, so really incorporating that into the fiber of the organization. That's amazing. What a great opportunity. And speaking of great opportunities, I feel like this opportunity was like the opportunity of a lifetime for you. You served as a coordinator for Fraternity and Sorority Life at the University of Memphis. Talk to our audience. What did you learn in this particular role at Memphis? Mike, I learned so much. <laughs> so, um, you know, as I said, I did a career pivot. I was in healthcare, and then um, I had what I lovingly refer to as a quarter life crisis. Reevaluated and decided that I really I wanted to go into higher ed. I loved working with college students. Um, and so, when I was getting my master's in higher ed, I was also working in higher ed um, in financial aid. So my first job was in financial aid, and then I pivoted from financial aid to fraternity and sorority life. So, you know, complete. 180 on the spectrum of um, roles and responsibilities. <laughs> um, but prior to that role, I really had only worked with the Panhellenic community. I'm a member of the Panhellenic community. Um, I had leadership roles in the Panhellenic community, but I hadn't really branched out. And so in this position at the University of Memphis, I, um, I was basically an office of one. Um, 
I, I was housed in a larger office, student leadership and involvement, but I was the sole person that worked with fraternity and sorority life. So I was hands-on with all three councils that we had on campus, Panhellenic, IFC, and our MPHC organizations. Um, and we are blessed that we have all nine of the Divine Nine on campus, um, which is huge <laughs> for a PWI. Yeah. So um, I was able to learn a whole lot about the different councils and how they work and their similarities and their differences um, and how to change up my advising based on, you know, the organization that I was supporting. Um, but I also learned a lot about myself. And so I learned um, that I can't solve all the problems alone. Um, and that I also had to leave work at work, um, that I couldn't take work home with me and be available all hours of the night um, because I needed to be the best version of myself when I showed up. Um, and so I had to I had to learn how to put some of those boundaries in place. Yeah, really good lessons there. I feel like you and I are very, you know, much the same in that regard. You know, as an undergraduate, it was all about IFC. I mean, that's all I knew. And it wasn't until I was an adult that I really get to appreciate all of the councils. And now when we start looking at things like, you know, step shows and things like that, like those yeah. are my favorite events. And so it's like I have a completely different perspective as an adult who has been working with all councils now than I did when I was an undergrad. And I wish that I would have appreciated some of the other councils more yeah. when I was an undergraduate. It just wasn't a part of my experience. And that's not me. Like I should have been reaching out to these other councils to know who the other chapter presidents are in all of these other councils, right? And if I would have done that, my network would have been that much bigger and who knows right. what that yeah. could have led to, right? So I just encourage you to step out of your comfort zone and reach out to other councils and just really learn as much as you Absolutely. can about other cultures, about other people. And I think it's just going to make you a better person. So yeah, and that's one of the things that's so hard is that all of, you know, all of our students always talk about how they wish there was more cross council collaboration and they wish they could do events with other organizations, but nobody wants to take the first step. Right. And you know, be vulnerable and ask and say hi and make that introduction. So that I would encourage that is just take the first step and see, like, you don't have to have the whole staircase figured out. Just, just reach out and make an introduction, say hi, take that first step. Yeah, totally agree with you completely. So now you're the director of the Center for Service Learning and Volunteerism at the, Uni at the University of Memphis. And as a sorority member, you know that today people don't always join fraternities and sororities for that service component. It's more about the social events. I mean, let's just be honest, right? So how do we get back to our roots and bring service back to the forefront of fraternity and sorority? Yeah, so I think it's going back to our roots, literally. So it starts with a firm understanding of our founding values. Um, and so I think it's important for us to be rereading our ritual, not just once a year during initiation, but figuring out a way to incorporate part of it into every chapter meeting that we have um, and really understanding the values of our organization, understanding our own personal values and living by them. Um, and so understanding why our founders created these amazing organizations that we have, and then using those values um, and commitment to do good in the global community. Ooh, I love that. I wish that every chapter would just go back and reread their ritual and really understand it. I know as an undergraduate, I mean, especially going through the ritual the first time, I had no idea. I was just so excited to get into the organization. I had no idea what any, the meaning was of any hey, of the yeah. stuff that I've just <laughs> seen. And it's like, you're so in the moment, you don't really kind of have that wide lens view of what are they really trying to tell me here? Um, and it's not until later as an adult that I really study the ritual and come to understand all of the symbolism that's there. And yeah. so I would encourage everybody to do that. A um, lot of fraternities, sororities have what's called like a master of the ritual type program where somebody really understands this stuff and can teach it. And that is kind of going to the next level for your fraternity and sorority experience. So I would just encourage that because I know if it's anything like me, you probably saw a bunch of stuff and you don't even realize what the heck all of it means. So spend time with it. And I think maybe that is getting back to the roots, the founding of our organizations. And maybe then we can really appreciate that service learning component. And speaking of service learning, I mean, you're kind of an expert in this, right? So what types of... Uh, give us some examples of service learning that today's fraternities and sororities should consider in their chapters, because I think it's great for brotherhood and sisterhood. I don't think there's anything better than service learning. I, I agree with you 100%. Um, I think it's going to be unique to each organization. 
Um, but I think the best way to do it is for all of them um, to look back and start with their philanthropies. So every organization has a philanthropy or an organization that they partner with, that they support in some way, um, even if it's just in name only, you know, we might be working starting from the beginning. Yeah. Um, but so coming up with ways that they can do hands on service in support of that organization. Um, so if your national organization is supporting um, ending hunger, then finding a way to partner with your local food bank. Um, but then in addition to that, I think, you know, that's the service part, but we also need to do the learning part for service learning. Um, and so making sure that they have some sort of debrief at the end of their service um, to truly understand the impact that they're having um, and also understand the place of privilege that they're coming from to be able to give that impact. Um, so I think that's huge. And I think that's a piece that we're missing. Yeah, you bring up a, a great point. It's that debrief after to really kind of explore your feelings about what it is that we just did for the community yeah. and how we just made a difference. And sharing that as a brotherhood or a sisterhood is really, really important. I think that piece is so overlooked most of the time. It's like most of the time if we do service, right, it's like, OK, that's done. Check. Yeah. We can now move yep. on with the rest of the semester. No, 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 no. Stay there for a second. Do yeah. that debrief and talk about how the fraternity or sorority just made a big impact in the community. Like what difference did we make? And let's spend like a half hour, an hour talking about that and maybe journaling and writing and reflecting on what we just did. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, it's such a critical component, but I just don't know yeah. that enough chapters are really it's, taking advantage of it. It's missed. Yeah. It's missed. Yeah. So you're also an adjunct instructor at Memphis. You're teaching academic strategies. Look at you, Professor. Um, can, so can you help our listeners with some tips on improving either their personal GPA or maybe their chapter GPA? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I teach academic strategies, but I also am the coordinator for our community action and social change minor. Um, and so as part of that, I get to come up with some curriculum for some different leadership classes, and that's super cool too. Um, but for GPA specifically, um, I'm big on, I think we need to, um, for the chapter GPAs, you know, pairing or grouping members together um, based on what their majors are, or if they're having study nights, um, or just, you know, making sure they know who else is in their major that's in the chapter so that they can have some of those relationships, talk about their professors, talk about their classes, get help when they need help. Um, one of the things that we did in my organization, which I really loved, was we had Geek of the Week. And so um, each week, you know, you could submit if you got an A on a paper or an exam, um, you could submit that. And then at chapter every week, we pulled one name out of a hat and celebrated whoever that one person was. And, you know, they got a little prize. And um, had to take a silly picture or whatever. Um, but I think fun encouragement like that is always, you know, a good way to help promote um, academics as well. And then I would say um, what I tell my ACAD students um, is make sure you get to know your instructors. So um, talk to your instructors, introduce yourself at the beginning of the semester, go to their office hours if they have office hours, um, build those relationships. And so for our chapters as a whole, you know, maybe they could host a professor appreciation luncheon or a brunch or something, um, but something that's promoting and encouraging building those academic relationships. Those are great tips. And I know I was an accounting major as an undergrad, which nobody believes me when I tell them that. And, <laughs> uh, and yeah, I had, you know, an older brother in the chapter who was also an accounting major. He literally mapped out my entire four-year process at University of Buffalo, yeah. like which professors to take, which classes to take. I mean, like I would have been lost. Like he was literally like my advisor, like even though he was in the chapter. Yeah. It saved me so much time and aggravation to know like which teachers I should be taking, um, just knowing full well, like what their teaching style is like and that I would be successful with yeah. them. So I was really grateful for that. And, you know, the other thing too that, that I've seen that works really well today is just, um, you know, really having this like, um, essentially this draft, this scholarship draft in the chapter to take advantage of the competitiveness that's in our yeah. fraternities and sororities. And really, basically what you do is you just take like, let's say the top five, six, seven uh, GPAs last semester within your chapter, they become the team leaders, have them do like a football, fantasy football style draft. <laughs> 
with your entire chapter. I and love so that, that way everybody gets paired onto a team. And now you have this focus group of people that are meeting at the library and it's all competitive. And whoever yeah. has the highest team GPA ends up winning some prize. Maybe it's a pizza party, who knows? You know, come up with some prize that's really exciting for everybody. And those competitive juices, I'm telling yeah. you, it works. Everybody wants to win a prize. And uh, if it's a good prize, then I think you're going to have a lot of people uh, competing for that number one team. And now everybody's into like fantasy football. So it's kind of like that whole competitive thing, you know, gets them going too. So yeah. I don't know if you remember um, when Lily Pulitzer did the sorority prints, mm -hmm. uh, but Kappa was one of the sororities that they did a print for. And so um, one year we did a competition of who could log the most um, study hours in a semester. And the prize was the overnight duffel Kappa Lily bag. I don't think our chapter has ever studied that much, like in the <laughs> history of um, Kappa Theta Upsilon. Like <laughs> we were all there every week from start to finish because we all wanted that bag. Yeah, I mean, you have to know your chapter members. You have yeah. to know what it is that they want. It could be swag for your fraternity sorority. It could be a pizza party, who knows? Figure it out, right? Whatever that yeah. is and make that the prize because I agree with you. I think you'll never see such cooperation and competitive nature come out in your chapter like that. Uh, when you have the right prize, that's going to be the key. Um, so I really like that. Now, I know you're a big fan of our entire book series, the From Letters to Leaders book series. We obviously have the new book out that's on artificial intelligence. You were the first person to run out and buy it. So I so appreciate that. Talk to our audience a little bit about what makes you so excited about these books. Yeah. So number one, um, I'm a big hype girl. And I love I love supporting my friends and supporting my people. Um, and so you are you are part of my network and my support system. Um, and so if you're doing something awesome, I want to support it. I want to encourage it and I want to promote it. So you're publishing books. I'm going to buy them. I'm going to read them and I'm going to talk to everybody about them. <laughs> so um, but second um, and a little bit unbiased, like that's my biased version because we're buds. Um, but I think the work that your team is doing um, has the potential to really revolutionize fraternity and sorority life. Um, and so I want to make sure that I'm educating myself um, so that I can be a part of that. Wow, that's really, really kind of you to say. And uh, yeah, I mean, some of the stuff that we do, like using artificial intelligence and fraternity and sorority, like this isn't something that anybody is talking about. No, and absolutely I'm just not. like, you know, I'm like, let's just put a blueprint out there and let's just get started with it and let's see where it goes because. I just feel like we're doing a disservice to our students if we're not introducing them to artificial intelligence, yeah. because ultimately, like artificial intelligence, it's going to change the way that our world works, whether we want it to or not. Like our students are using it and companies are using it to make sure yeah. their employees are more efficient and more effective in their work. So I feel like if we don't get them started with like small projects within their fraternity and sorority today, then I feel like they're going to be behind the eight ball a little bit when they get out in their career and their employer expects them to know how to use it. Yeah, and, absolutely. You know, so I mean, like now I think it's just the best time to test it out and see how we can improve our fraternities and sororities by using it. And I really feel like, you know, the book, the latest one really gives you a blueprint on how to do that. So, you know, we're just trying new and innovative ways to kind of reinvent fraternity and sorority life into the future because I know it's going to be a part of it. So we might as yeah. well get started with it. Um, so I really appreciate all those kinds of kind words. That's really, really nice of you. And I, I know we all appreciate all the support. So thank you for being a fan. I think that's fantastic. Absolutely. Now, Thanks for doing the good work you do. Hey, I, I'm out here. I'm, I'm out, you know, doing whatever I can to make fraternity and sorority the best that it can be. Um, I, I firmly believe that it's the best leadership experience that we have at Memphis or any other college campus in the country, but we got to do it right. And that's Absolutely. really kind of what I'm focused on. Um, so I love all of that. Now, you know that we love good food here at the Fraternity Foodie Podcast. And one of these days, I'm going to make my way out to Memphis. You know, they haven't invited me to come out and speak yet. So, I mean, let's let, we can talk about that because I would love to come out and work with the fraternity and sorority system out there in Memphis because you got some incredible students on your campus. So when I finally get out to Memphis, where should we go out together to, in order to get a great meal? Yeah, absolutely. So um, you know that Memphis has the best barbecue in the nation. <laughs> okay. And I don't care about the little comments that you're going to get on the podcast of people disagreeing with me. Memphis <laughs> is where it's at. 
So um, you'll definitely have to check out our barbecue restaurant. Central Barbecue and One and Only are my favorites. There are some other ones that people will recommend. We're going to Central Barbecue or One and Only. Um, and then also um, Huey's is another local favorite that has amazing burgers. So if you're feeling burgers versus barbecue, we'll go to Huey's. All right. I think we're going to do both burgers and barbecue right. because Done. you can't go wrong with either one. So that sounds absolutely amazing. And you know what? Nashville does have some pretty good barbecue, too. I'm just saying. <laughs> just saying. The fact that this isn't the only place to get barbecue, but I believe it's very good. That I will tell you. I am sure it is absolutely delicious. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if our listeners, if they want to connect with you to learn more about service learning and volunteerism for their chapters, where can they go to connect with you? Yeah, absolutely. So um, my email address, you know, sometimes I'm a grandma and email is the best way to get in touch with me. Um, I know I know this generation isn't as fond of email, but um, ckryan at memphis.edu. Um, social media, I'm most active on Instagram. Um, never just could get behind, I could never get on Twitter. I'm on Twitter. I think I have like 20 followers. I've just never really, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm trying to figure it out. Um, <laughs> but my Instagram is at it's Kelsey Ryan. So pretty easy to find, um, on Instagram and you can always shoot me an email. Fantastic. Kelsey is a great resource to all of our listeners. Anything that you want, fraternity and sorority related, volunteerism related, service, uh, higher ed, whatever, just throw your questions over there. And I'm telling you, she's got great resources and great suggestions. So this we is can also talk Taylor thing. Swift and Harry Potter. So absolutely. <laughs> and if there are any Swifties out there, let me tell you, Kelsey is like top of the chain when it comes to Swifties. Okay. So, I mean, any question you have, she will love to talk to you about it. She would love to come out to your campus and talk about Swifties absolutely. and the whole thing. She's yeah. got a whole presentation. I've seen the whole thing. Okay. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> all right Kelsey well listen this has been a lot of fun I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for being such a big fan of Greek University and our team and our books and our podcasts and our social media like I, I tell you I so appreciate that um, and so I just want to say thank you for being a huge fan and for promoting our work we can't do it by ourselves we need to have people that share our work and I know that you do that and so thank you from the bottom of my heart Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It was fun to see you. Yeah. Um, and I hope AFA goes well this week. I know it's going to be great. And uh, we're all going to miss you here at AFA, but I know you're doing great work out there at Memphis and, uh, and all the best, all the best to you and all the work that you're doing with your great students over there at Memphis. And, uh, and thank you. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. I know that our listeners really enjoy talking to you. Thanks, Mike. All right, you got it. And to our listeners, if you enjoyed this talk with Kelsey, I want you to like it and I want you to share it on social media with everybody that you know. And we look forward to seeing you on another episode of the Fraternity Foodie Podcast. Thanks so much for joining us and we're going to see you next time. 